Do you guys want to hear what I've actually been playing for the past couple of months? I've been playing a lot of games in secret. No, I mean, if you follow me on social media, you have probably seen that I have been playing these games. But I think it's time to properly talk about them. And I've been playing a lot of PlayStation 5 games. I've been trophy hunting. I finally completed the platinum trophy in Assassin's Creed Mirage. That was an easy platinum. Highly recommend. Very good game. Very much looking forward to Assassin's Creed Shadows dropping later this year. I'm gonna try and get the platinum trophy in that one too. Now, a game that I have been playing is one that I've been really late to. I remember receiving like an email. Do you want a review code of this game? And I was so stacked at the time that I said, nah, uh, I don't have the time. And so that window of opportunity left me. And now like six months later, I'm like, I want to play that game. Now I have the time. But now I had to buy it for myself. And so I did. And I don't regret anything. And that is, it's super niche, okay? Hold on to something. It's Fate Samurai Remnant for the PS5. It's also out somewhere else. I don't know. Maybe PC. Oh, it's also out on Switch, but I don't think I recommend the Switch version. I played the Switch demo and the graphics are so downscaled compared to the PS5 version. PS5 version actually looks good. Can't say the same for the Switch version. But anyways, it's a somewhat unusual game. I went into it thinking, is this somewhat like the Muso hack and slash games? Like the two previous Fate games that I have already played, like Fate Extella the Umbral Star and Fate Extella Link, uh, both which I enjoyed. I enjoyed Link the most, I've beaten them both. So I went into Fate Samurai Remnant thinking it's gonna be the same, but it's not, okay? Definitely not. It's kind of a gameplay loop that I am not familiar with. Uh, it's really strange. But before we get into that, this video is sponsored by Game Beauty, a makeup brand based on loving video games. They sent over the Elemental Blast palettes. We have the Geo and the Dendro. These eyeshadows are very pigmented and easy to work with, and I am absolutely loving the multi-chrome colors, Luminescent Spar being a very interesting one. And then we have the Elemental Pearl Highlighter. The Geo one will now be used every day by me. The prices are surprisingly affordable, if I may say so myself, regardless of this being a sponsor. You get nine pigmented shadows for $25. That is absolutely great value. Game Beauty also sent over the entire Attack on Titan makeup collection with three eyeshadow palettes and four shades of lip glosses with portraits of Attack on Titan characters on them. Now on their website, gamebeauty.com, they also have a collection with Persona 5 royal characters and that is a limited edition makeup collection with blushes, liquid lipsticks and liquid eyeshadow eyeliners featuring characters from Persona. There's also a full set of makeup brushes with ergonomic grips. Here we have the Harbinger palette, very dungeony colors, and the Cyberpunk palette with a nice variety. You know, I heard that yellow is really hard to get really pigmented, but they nailed this one. Also the blue is good, the pink is good. I will be using Game Beauty from now on, especially the Geo palette. Now links to these are down below. Buy them for your girlfriend. Also there is a discount code, 10% off if you purchase with my link. Thank you so much Game Beauty for sponsoring this video. Now you play as this guy and the Fate universe has a deep lore and it's all about this holy grail sort of event that's supposedly gonna happen. And this guy is the chosen one, one of the chosen ones anyway. And he's the master of a servant. The servant is this girl Saber, really cute. Loving her, loving everything about her. There are some cities that you can walk around in and pick up some stuff, go to some vendors, buy some stuff, also do some random fights. Now it is an action combat game, but it's not a Musou game. I don't know what I could compare it to, just like an action hack and slash game, but that is that genre is so wide and so spread out that that doesn't really describe it. But basically later you get this map and all of the locations has some things that you could do and collect within them. And most importantly, you have to go into this game knowing that it is very story heavy. I would say the dialogue and story is taking up such a huge amount of time that I would call this a visual novel hybrid. It's almost like 50% gameplay and 50, no more like 60% dialogue, I feel. But I'm enjoying it, I am taking it all in. You have a little room, little house thing, where you can look in your books, do some upgrades, yada yada, sleep and rest and save. There are equipable stuff, cats to pet, dogs to pet. Are you a cat person or a dog person? Kidding. And then in the story you come across these ley line puzzles, not a fan of those, but I do 
like the combat in this game. It feels smooth and good and you unlock more and more servants in the game. Now you mainly control this guy, but you can also sometimes, for a limited time, control the servants also. It's a good looking game. I am enjoying my time. I am enjoying how it looks and how it feels. And if you like the look of this game, just know that there is a lot of dialogue and a lot of story and it's not a muso. The gameplay loop is kind of unusual. The Fate series is all in all really unusual, but I am enjoying it. Put it to your wish list. Not recommending the Switch version. You know, the usual stuff. I thought I would mention that. I'm still drinking gamer subs. You know, there's like an inside joke within this household that gamer subs, the development team, they're still in Japan. They sent over to me like a big care package with a lot of things and they were like, yeah, we're, we're interested in discussing a sponsorship with you. We're gonna hit you up once we're back from Japan. I never heard from them again. That's like one and a half a year ago. So in my head, they're still in Japan. I have a, a tiny little mention, hold on. <laughs> Weathering Waves on PC, actual Genshin Impact clone. Like if you like Genshin Impact and you are craving some more Genshin Impact, play Weathering Waves. I downloaded it within the Epic Games launcher because it's not on Steam or, or anything like that uh, yet. But it is looking so good. And for the life of me, while I was playing, like the first hours in Weathering Waves, I was like, how are they allowed to copy Genshin Impact this much? Was what I was thinking. I had to Google up like, are they related to Genshin Impact somehow? Is this the same development team? Are they borrowing some assets? But no, I couldn't find any obvious correlation between the games. But it is so similar. Like the movements, the menus, the text style, the combat, the entire like gameplay. It's Genshin Impact 2. I remember thinking the same when I played uh, Tower of Fantasy, which is also like the biggest Genshin Impact clone. It's in the same vein as that. This one, I mean, w Weathering Waves. Kind of a difficult title. Weathering Waves. But it's definitely beautiful and it deserves such a mention on Isha Gaming because I know I have a lot of Genshin Impact fans on here watching but I haven't had the time to really deep dive into it and also I feel like it's just such a clone. Also busy with other games but I know I will be dipping hard back into this game later. Also I think I need someone to play with because this is a multiplayer game also just like in Genshin Impact I think. Uh, I haven't touched into that but I remember Genshin Impact was a lot more fun when I played together with not no consoler cousin. You know the one that says the history was good. So that is definitely cute. Wuthering Waves on PC. Free heavy microtransaction game, but never mind that. I am able to stay away from microtransaction. Not everyone is, I understand, but um, it is what it is. Definitely worth a mention. Now another game I've been playing on PS5, which is also free to play, and I have been looking forward to this game uh, ever since I saw it announced like maybe a year ago, uh, a long time ago. And that is The First Descendant. It's a looter shooter, which is a genre I enjoy delving into, as you may may know, I don't know. I very much enjoy Destiny 2. That is like the best looter shooter. Also Outriders, completed that game, almost did a platinum trophy and uh, really much enjoyed that. That one had a good story. Uh, anyways, The First Descendant, brand new, big player base from what I have seen and heard. It's gotten a lot of critique for having uh, very expensive microtransactions, which again, I am immune to. And uh, I think it's healthy to be somewhat immune to them by now. You have to develop that skill, put that skill into your skill tree in your life. Be immune to microtransactions. But here's the thing with the first Ascendant. The shooting feels satisfying. The combat to combat gameplay. It's very much like Destiny 2, like open areas with a lot of quests and a lot of other people running around. And you sometimes do the same quest and you shoot the same people and you level up and you get the gear because it's a looter shooter. Also there's a hub city and um, like everything is looking good uh, except for the big critique point, which is the, uh, the microtransactions. But I mean, like I haven't seen anyone critique anything else. So that means, and also from what I have played, I feel like the game is 
good enough. It's like a super okay game. Super okay game. If you are burnt out right now on, uh, I don't know, something else that you're playing, or you are just hungry for another looter shooter, or if you want something similar to Destiny 2 or Outriders right now, uh, that would be something I would look into. But it takes up a lot of space on the PS5. 100 gigs, I think. I had to clean up my PS5 a bit for that. <laughs> Definitely worth checking out since it's free. Now the last game of this video, uh, quick mention I guess, it's um, I, I have to give some sort of backstory for this one, okay? Uh, if you follow me on X, which is Twitter, I posted, wouldn't it be fun if Gust Koe Tecmo gave out like an Atelier Warriors game? And someone mentioned, well, Atelier Sophie was in one, and I was like, I had forgotten all about that. I know I have heard that many years ago, that Atelier Sophie, like Sophie, she is within like a cameo, like a guest appearance character in a Warriors game. But I have never really looked into it until now. And it was like super cheap and I bought it and it's called Warriors All Stars. And it is a PS4 title, playing it on my PS5. Such an okay Warriors game. Definitely getting what I was uh, looking for. You're playing Sophie, also plucked eyes in it. And a lot of other characters from the Koei Tecmo games, like the chick from Knights of Asher, Knights of Asher, maybe. And a lot of characters that I don't recognize also. Pretty decent stuff. I beat that in 10 hours. There's a lot of content to, you know, that you can choose to do. But the, if you're rushing the main story and also doing a tiny bit of side questing along the way, it's gonna be like a 10 hour game. And the price point was good, so uh, that was also good. I liked her movesets, like throwing bombs, a lot of slimes, the whole shebang. And let's see, what else have I been playing? Oh yeah, Bloomtown. Looking forward to that game now. I've been playing the demo on Steam. Bloomtown is gonna be really good. I think I'm gonna play that on the Switch because I have a feeling that now I'm gonna only play like uh, first party games and pixel games on the Switch. Uh, anything I want, like graphics from, I'm gonna play on PS5. Now, as an ending, I thought I would mention that I got a feedback on Discord from a guy called Frankie Link. And that little piece of feedback has given me a spark of motivation when it comes to YouTube, actually. He said, watching your videos, it's, it's so beautiful. Watching your videos, it's like you are talking to a friend and not to thousands of people. He said that, that it feels like that. And I was like, that is exactly the feeling I wanna portray here. I'm talking to you. Thank you so much for that, Frankie Link. Uh, I'm gonna highlight that feedback because uh, it meant something to me. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Maybe found some games that you could play. Two of them are free. One of them is maybe on sale. So that is my actually played lately. A few hidden gems, if you will. And uh, hit like on this video if you enjoy it. Watch my other videos right now on my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. They're still in Japan, okay?